Welcome to the B Word Podcast, the podcast for women who know they're meant for more and just need a little bit of help getting there. I'm Joanne Bolt, and I am obsessed with helping women just like you move out of the messy middle and into a business that is sassy, classy, and a little badassy. Together, we'll unpack it all from money and mindset to the little simple strategies that you can implement today in your business. Grab a glass of wine and your AirPods and curl up on the couch because happy hour with your besties has begun right now here on The B Word. Guys, we are back and today is going to be really interesting for me. I'm going to introduce you to part of my team. Um, and some of, you know, some of you don't know, but a large portion of the Joanne Bolt team is actually not like, they're not employees of me. They're people I contract out to because I fully believe in letting people do what they're best at. And sometimes having a full-time employee on your team, isn't the right answer. Now I will tell you, I have spent years hiring and firing and letting go of people on my team. And here's one thing I've learned along the way. When you fail because you hire the wrong people is probably because you had no clue what you were hiring for. So my promise is always, I will go first. And I made this commitment to myself a couple of years ago after listening to Amy Porterfield tell her students that her commitment is she'll always try everything first. And it kind of dawned on me in my own business that the reason I wasn't doing well with hiring people was I had no idea what they were actually doing. And so about a year ago, I decided Pinterest was going to be something I wanted to try in the business just to see how could I drive traffic? Is it, is it more than just a place to go for recipes and workouts and sometimes fun outfits? Like really it's a, it's a search tool. And so how could I use it? So I spent six months diving into Pinterest. I made all the graphics, I did made all the boards, I did all the things because when I truly understood the breadth and depth of this fun little tool, only then could I actually hire out someone and understand the value they brought to take that time off my hands. So in comes 95 Media, Emma and Hayden are goddesses in my world because now I understand the value of Pinterest and the value of my time. And um, I can understand what they bring to the table because now that I've tried it myself, I fully know that I don't want to always be the one pinning as fun as that is. So if you want to pin it to win it, you got to get someone who understands this little platform. And I'm going to let you guys just kind of take it away because that's what I've done with you in my business a little bit. Yeah, I love it. Well, thank you for having us here today. I'm so excited to share everything. We were such big believers in utilizing Pinterest to drive website traffic. And for so many of the brands that we've worked with, Pinterest is really just this incredible tool to send traffic to your website a lot faster and higher converting than other platforms that we deem as social media. Because at the end of the day, Pinterest is really a search engine rather than social media. And so the way that we approach it is really different than something like Instagram or Facebook or even TikTok. Um, So what we're going to cover today are five secrets to Pinterest strategy, because these are things that we have found to be tried and true methods with, you know, every brand that we've worked with, including the work that we do with you, Joanne. And so we're really excited to just kind of like dive in and cover all of this today. So I'll let Hayden cover the first one and then we'll kind of jump around from there. Yeah, absolutely. I am so excited to be with you, Joanne, today. Just had to say, Um, but number one, it's going to be to optimize your profile. And to do this, your Pinterest profile should be optimized to reflect your brand voice, your product, um, or what you offer, and show your personality and your brand vibe. And this is one thing that you said that I will always remember, Joanne. You said that social media is the welcome mat to your audience. And it's so true. Um, Customers aren't just looking to buy your product. They want to buy you and the story behind the product. And so how you can do this, how we do this is to optimize your bio with 
keywords. Um, this gets your profile in front of the right eyes. Like Emma was saying, it's it's a search engine. Um, so using those keywords, which we'll talk more about those in a second, but using those in your bio really gets your profile in front of the right eyes. And then using high quality photos that reflect you and your brand for your cover photo and your profile photo and optimizing your board covers with titles, your brand colors, and even incorporating your logo. And I know it feels like those covers are so tiny, but you can incorporate your logo. We do that for um, a, a lot of our clients. And it just makes everything look so cohesive. And really it's all about making your profile visually appealing, consistent with your brand, and then easy to navigate for your viewers. You know what I love about Pinterest is unlike Facebook or Instagram or TikTok, you know, you go to someone's feed and you have to, if you're searching for a particular thing that they talk about, like you have to hunt through their feed. Whereas Pinterest, it, I mean, you can sort things. And so I can quickly go to someone that I follow on Pinterest and look at, well, I want to see what they're talking about for X, Y, Z and go find their board for that. And it's all organized, which for the little data nerd in me, that is so fun. Like it's not only visual fun to look at, but it's it's easy to navigate. Absolutely. And that really also goes back to it being a search engine, right? Like you're able to search those keywords so much faster. And we're going to dive into keywords in a second, but, you know, keywords are such an important part of Pinterest because that is what allows you to find exactly what you're looking for, whether it's a dinner recipe or a freebie on creating a media kit, you can really find something a lot faster on Pinterest than any other social media platform, which is really amazing. And I think to understand the dynamics of Pinterest, because it took me a little bit, a little while to get that mindset of, I, I can follow, you know, a Chelsea Pipes um, on Instagram for tips and tricks on, on running my Instagram account, or I can watch her daily life on her stories and, and get to know her as a person. People go to Pinterest to find out how to do something, where to buy something or how to make something like that is more of a search engine, not to understand someone's daily life and who they are as a person, but how can they help you get, get shit done? You know, like get it done. Yes. It's definitely a change in approach. And I love what you're saying because it really, when you're approaching your content on something like Instagram, you are really focusing on sharing about your brand and sharing behind the scenes and building that personal connection with them. However, on Pinterest, someone is looking for something really specific as you're saying. And so a lot of the times it is a how-to or it's a really specific, you know, outfit inspo or something like that. Or on the flip side, it can be searching for a vendor for something like a wedding. You know, we have a lot of clients in the wedding industry. And so someone might be looking for a specific product or a tablescape or a type of tent to use at their wedding. And those are all different ways that you can find product. And even if you aren't looking for a product, inspiration is such a big part of Pinterest as well, whether you're putting together a mood board for like your home decor, or if you are um, putting together, you know, your new year's manifestation board and you want to have some really beautiful images, there's so many ways to pull inspo from Pinterest. And so there really are a lot of ways to approach it. And that kind of feeds into our second tip, which is creating really high value content. Because at the end of the day, you want to make sure that the content you're posting here is of value versus on other social media platforms where a lot of the content might be entertainment. And so when you're creating for Pinterest, entertainment really isn't a factor here. You really Really are looking to create content that is valuable to the to the person looking at it because they have searched specifically for this piece of content. So we always recommend, you know, you want to create that content that it's really visually appealing and valuable, not only in the moment, but long-term. They want, you want them to be able to save it. And also of course, click through to that pin and land on wherever you're trying to send them, which is likely your website or a landing page that you've created that is going to capture their information so that you can either email them the freebie or you can upsell them into a bigger offer. And really, you know, when you look at what type of pins to create, you want to make sure you're creating vertical pins. 
So those are, you know, not horizontal. They really are tall and skinny so that they're taking up more space on your, uh, on the person's explore page and on your Pinterest boards as well. It's going to capture their attention. And it's also going to give them more material to read through because if the text is too small and they don't know what they're clicking through to, they likely aren't going to actually click on the pin and then land over to your website. So it's these little pieces that kind of entice someone to take the action that you're looking for them to take on Pinterest. Even but if that action is just to get them to your Instagram so that you can entertain or show them who you are as a part, like it's mm -hmm. not always about freebies. It's, you know, especially in, if you were a service industry, like a loan officer or a real estate agent, sometimes it's just, let me give you good tips on what I do and then send you to where I want you to get to know me as a brand or as a product person. Like and that, again, that's that mindset shift for me with, with Pinterest and how cool it is. Yeah. And just like with anything else, you're trying to get them off the platform. Mm -hmm. So even if you are sending them, maybe your pin is four tips to staging your house, you know, when you list it or for your Zillow listing or whatever it might be. Right. And so you could actually just link to an Instagram post where it's a carousel and it gives those four tips. And then you could have a blog post about it as well. So the same pin could link to a blog post with the same information. And what's really beautiful about Pinterest is it does give you the opportunity to repurpose content in so many ways. And that's really the beauty of you can create so much more content on this platform because you can link it to so many different places. And not only linking photos too, you know, video is actually becoming really, really popular on Pinterest, which makes a lot of sense since it's king everywhere else as well, but utilize those videos that you are making for, you know, reels or TikTok. start, you know, repurposing them over to Pinterest. Cause you're going to see that they're a lot more engaging. Even if you as the consumer are experiencing Pinterest and you're going through your explore page, videos are going to catch your attention, just like they're going to catch the attention of your consumer, your target audience as well. So when you repurpose a video that you've created for Instagram, and then you put it over on Pinterest, you're just seeing more ROI from that one piece of content, which is of course the goal at the end of the day. Yes, absolutely. And then, so point number three is to use keywords. So what we've been talking about like this whole time, it's honestly my favorite part of Pinterest because it is honestly the biggest part to me, but it's also the most fun. Um, I like to say Pinterest is a visual search engine. So it's important to use relevant keywords in your boards, your board titles, your pins, and your descriptions within that pin to make it easier for people to find your content and then also reach a wider audience. So this gets your content in front of more eyes, but also the right eyes. So a way that you can find optimal keywords for your brand is to actually research popular search items in your niche um, or terms relating to your product, your offerings, um, a lot of times I feel like clients feel like the keywords have to be exactly their product, their product only, or their brand, their exact thing that really can sometimes be super specific to, to their brand only. But another way that I like to look at it is including terms your ideal client would search. So if you're, if you're trying to target a mom of three, she's running her own business, she's super busy, you know, she's going to have, she's probably going to be looking for um, so many different things. And so thinking about energy drinks, <laughs> right? Yes. Let me get that Celsius that she's, yeah. that she's looking for. Um, she's looking for. Uh, how to build out your power hour. Like Joanne has, has some pins about that. Just super important stuff. Um, and including them in your content, wherever they work, you know, where they, where they match what you're talking about. So another example is one of our wedding industry clients, their target audience is the bride. She's searching for some examples, wedding inspo, wedding decor, wedding reception ideas, um, and including those into the description of the pin really helps her find that wedding industry client. Um, these are things you want to include in the description to help people find you, um, find what you offer faster, easier, and 
find exactly what they're looking for because you have it and it's keywords are such an easy way to grab them and bring them over to your page. Yeah, I think keywords are so under underrated, honestly, because it is like the number one way you're getting found. And when you can start thinking bigger and kind of those connection points outside of exactly what you do, which is the core, then you really will start bringing in more people who are looking for what you have to offer in a related field. And so it just expands your search optimization. Here's the other thing I kind of want to touch on with keywords too. And I think a lot of, again, I keep talking about the mindset shift with Pinterest for me, but you know, when you're on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok, it's all about how many people are following you, right? Like, do you have a million followers? Do you have one follower? Do you have a thousand followers? Because that gives you an indicator of how many people may see your content. Whereas on Pinterest, because the point of Pinterest is to get them off Pinterest and into your, your world somehow, it's really not about how many followers you have. It's about, are you using your keywords correctly so that if someone goes and searches, they find your pin and they click through. So I I know we've had a lot of strategy conversations about this is don't get hung up on Pinterest that you have a small following because think about it. If you use Pinterest for recipes, are you necessarily following one person for recipes or do you just go and search? I want shepherd's pie. And then you find the shepherd's pie you want and you pin that particular pin. So in that world, those keywords are so much more critical because I'm really looking at, at how many people, you know, for a particular pin, how many times has it been pinned and how many click throughs on the link, you know, am I getting way more important than the follows on Pinterest, which is why that keyword optimization becomes more critical in this platform than I feel like it does in other platforms. Yes. I am obsessed with everything you're saying. We actually have a client who has 4 million monthly views, which is really the number that like, that's a public number that everyone can see. So that's a little, that holds a bit more weight on Pinterest than your followers or way more weight than your followers. They have 4 million monthly views and they have a couple hundred followers. So that right there tells you that your there's zero correlation between those two numbers. And it really goes back to the value of your content and those keywords. How, how often are they being found and how valuable are they? Which then of course correlates to your click-through rates and getting them off the platform itself. So a hundred percent, your follower count just does not, I mean, it really doesn't mean much on any platform, but especially on Pinterest, it really does not correlate to your actual reach and impressions of the content that you're creating here. And learning to read analytics, especially as as someone who owns a business, and I'm a data nerd, like everybody knows that, like I geek out on the numbers, but learning to, on whatever platform you're on, which analytic pieces you need to be paying attention to is so critical because otherwise you could, you could hop onto Pinterest, try it for a year and think, oh my God, I only have 15 followers. This is worthless and not understand the value and the breadth of what's happening on the back end because you you didn't realize you needed to look at click through rates. A hundred percent. Hayden, why don't you touch on that? Cause that is one of our points as well. Yes. Sorry, I like to get off topic. Y'all know that by now. <laughs> we are just hopping around. It's all yes. good. <laughs> no, I love it. So one of the other things we're going to talk about is tracking your results. Like you were saying, you know, looking at those analytics. Um, and it's important to look at those to see what's working and what's not. Um, it really helps you optimize your strategy over time and improve your results with Pinterest. So the important ones to pay attention to uh, are impressions, clicks, those click throughs to go to your website and saves, as well as the performance of individual pins and boards. So impressions, this is just the number of times your pin was on the screen, was on somebody's laptop as they were scrolling through um, the amount of of eyes that saw that pin. Um, And then the outbound clicks is the number of time viewers tapped the link to go out of Pinterest into your website, like we've been saying. And then saves is the number of times viewers have repinned your content to their own boards. So all of these things, they help you measure your success, identify trends. You know, sometimes we'll create, I like to create a few different styles of pin for for one topic. This helps me see, okay, 
this pin was super successful. This, this template, this style, I want to use this again. Um, and it really helps me track the trend and then just the success of the different, of the different styles of pin. So at 95, our method is goals, strategy, execution, and data. So I'll kind of explain how that process goes. And we use it for Pinterest as well for all of our platforms and all of our clients. Um, goals. So we talk with our clients about overarching goals that they see for our work together, what they want their Pinterest to look like, you know, what do they want to see? Um, we talk about getting those clicks out to your website. Um, and we talk about our strategy to do that. Our team formulates a strategy with all this info that we meet and talk about. It's honestly one of my favorite parts of working with 95 is meeting our clients and just getting to like brainstorm about everything, just all the goals and everything that we want to see. And then executing it. Our team begins posting to your account and executing the strategy that we've all discussed together. And then data. That's what we're talking about. Each week we create a report for all of our clients with data from all accounts, all the platforms, and we reassess frequently to make adjustments as needed, you know, staying on top of those trends, staying on top of what's working, what's not. And like you were saying, Joanne, Pinterest analytics are so finicky and super volatile. You know, Pinterest changes all the time. And like you were saying, like, don't panic when you see those analytics. We actually look at them at 30 days instead of rather seven days. A lot of times when we look at other platforms, we may look at the last seven days, how those analytics have looked over the past week. But with Pinterest, you actually get a bigger picture view of everything when you look at the last 30 days. So Pinterest is interesting. She's, she's fun. She's crazy, but she's super useful for your business. I love it. It's amazing. I think she has PMS occasionally, but, yes. <laughs> and, and then like, and then she eats the ice cream and gets really excited and throws your stuff out in front of everyone. I'm like, this girl, I love yes. her. I love Pinterest. Yes, absolutely. I am Pinterest. That sounds like me. <laughs> well, and it's funny because I've been on Pinterest since, I mean, oh my God, like years and years and years and never, never used it for more than it became my digital cookbook. You know, I threw out all the cookbooks in my home and, and it, and I could organize into boards. I mean, we had to like really sort through that when I took you guys on and decided to change Pinterest into a business platform, but I, ne it never dawned on me how awesome it was for other things. But I think that, I think our society as a whole is starting to figure out that Pinterest is more than just recipes. It is the go-to for the DIYer. It is the go-to for the person that needs to learn how to make a speech in front of people. Like it is really the educational, you know, it's, it's like the baby version of YouTube, I guess, um, to get you onto the YouTube, to learn how to do the other stuff, but like they play, they play very well in the sand together. For sure. And I think that one thing he didn't touch on too, that a lot of people don't realize, and it goes in touch with what you're saying is to do that A-B testing and figure out what's working. Because sometimes, you know, that educational content that you are producing on this platform really isn't hitting. And you're like, well, why is no one seeing this? Like, why? This is such a great recipe or this is such a great tip on how to be a great speaker, right? And it's sometimes just goes back to the design of the pin and maybe that the text alignment isn't right or the colors aren't right or the photo you selected just really isn't connecting with your audience. So when you do that A-B testing where you're creating multiple designs that are sending traffic to one resource, you're able to see which one's really connecting with your audience and performing best for you. But I mean, to go back to what you were saying about, you know, feeling like it isn't working for you, knowing those numbers that you really need to be tracking is so, so crucial because they are slightly different than those other platforms. So I think it's just really important to know that your followers don't matter. Your monthly views are great, but really your impressions, outbound clicks, and saves, as Hayden was saying, are those three numbers that you really want to be looking at in those long-term, you know, 30 to 60 day um, quadrants so that you can actually look at everything big picture. So then our last tip is one of the most important as well. It is to pin consistently. So the number one mistake I see from a lot of brands that come to us and they, they're like you, Joanne, and they've been like, I've been doing this on my own for the past year, three years, whatever it might be. And like, I'm just not seeing the numbers I need to see is because they're pinning not in the way that Pinterest wants you to pin. So that might look like you are pinning 
30 pins on the first of the month and then calling it a day and you are done for the rest of the month. And you say, I'm out. I did my work. I don't need to touch this again. I batched. <laughs> yes. I batched it out and I'm, I'm done. Or you're pinning, you know, I'm doing it weekly. So to say I'm pinning three pins a week and they all go out on a Monday and then that's it for the entire week. And so the reason why both of those strategies aren't correct is because Pinterest wants consistency. And really it comes back to quantity on Pinterest. So the strategy that we take as a baseline for all the brands that we work on Pinterest for is three pins every single day of the month. So that is around 90 pins a month. And that might sound overwhelming considering you're probably posting like three to seven times a week total on Instagram or Facebook. However, that amount of content on Pinterest, it's what's going to build momentum for your account on that platform. It's going to get more people in and it's going to start getting you in front of the right people. But that doesn't mean that you have to pin like manually three times a day, because that would be insane. And I would never say to do that. We use Tailwind to schedule out content for Pinterest. And we're obsessed with Tailwind. It is such a great scheduler. It's just really, really smart and intuitive. And the really big benefit about Tailwind is that you can create all of your pins inside of something like Canva. So we build out our pins in Canva. We download them as JPEGs and then upload them into Tailwind. Once they're inside of Tailwind, you can write your keyword optimized description for the pin, and then you pick the boards that you want that pin to go out to. So what that means is one pin does not need to live on just one board. It should live on multiple boards. But as you were saying before, Joanne, and I know we've talked about this, is to make sure that you're pinning them to really applicable and relevant boards on your profile. So you want to make sure that a dinner recipe isn't landing on a social media marketing board and vice versa. However, you do want to maximize that content. So really think creatively, how can this pin be applicable to multiple boards that I have? And then when you schedule it on Tailwind, it's going to find the best days and times down to the minute. So it could be like 9.37 PM for your account. And it's going to auto publish those for you. And those pins are going to just be consistently going out to your profile and your account, and you do not need to lift a finger after you have scheduled them. So what we recommend is that you spend about, you know, two to three days a month creating those pins, writing your descriptions, getting them scheduled out. And so similarly to if you're that person who's, you know, pinning 30 times on the first of the month, you can keep that pattern. However, Tailwind's doing the work for you. So it's just auto pinning them you know, consistently through the month rather than all on one day. Okay. I love that auto scheduler. Yeah. Like the fact that tailwind figures out if you're doing something to this board, then Wednesday and, and you want it to go on, you tell it, I want to go on a Wednesday and then tailwind says, okay, well, based on what the keywords are in this pen, we feel that it, you should post it at 9 21 PM. That's when your audience is going to find it. Like that is what some of the smartest AI out there. It really is. And they also released their new AI uh, writer called Ghost Writer. And so yep. they can assist you with writing your keyword optimized descriptions for the pins themselves. I've experienced it to be like a little finicky. You definitely want to put your human brand voice touch on there, but it is a great place to start if you are struggling with like, what am I supposed to be saying here? Um, so that AI can support you in doing that further. I also like, and I don't know if you guys use this, but I like the communities um, in Tailwind too, because then you can join other communities and pin, you know, send your pins to other people's boards because the more, and again, mindset shift for me, I was like, well, if I'm going to use Pinterest for business, I should only be pinning my stuff to my boards. And the truth is I want other people's stuff on my boards, because if you find my board about email marketing and you start reading through it and it's only my content, you might click back off my board versus if I've got other people's content in there, now it's just binge worthy and you'll stay on my Pinterest board. And so the, the longer I can keep you in my board, the, ch the better chances I have of you clicking through from one of my pins. Definitely. And so the same mindset with that goes with, you know, determining how many pins a month you want to create that are unique to your brand and send traffic back to your website 
versus those that are repins as well. Cause it's the same, you know, thought process of, yes, I can pin to other people's community boards. They can pin to my boards if I invite them, but also, you know, consider repins to your boards themselves too. And Tailwind allows that to be really easy because there's a plugin for Chrome where you can just repin really easily, select your boards and have them go out. So for us, we typically do around a 75-25 split where 75% of the content for, you know, brands that we're working with on Pinterest is unique content, sending all traffic back to your website, your landing pages, checkout pages, all of the things. And then 25% is actually repinning content to your boards for that exact reason. You want to create more inspo content, have other creators on your page as well, so that you are providing a plethora of resources rather than just things that you have created. Especially especially if you're just getting started utilizing Pinterest, I feel as a business brand, like or you just opened your business or you just made a pivot and you're like, you may not have enough content to blow Pinterest up. And therefore like you might need a, a 25, 75 in the opposite direction. Like it may only be 25% your material and 75% other people's while you build it up. And then you can start shifting that ratio a little bit because really what you're doing is teaching people to come to you for these things on Pinterest because you're the go-to. Yeah. And that actually is a great point too, because a lot of people want to be on Pinterest, but feel like they can't because they don't have the resources. And that is something that I always say, you know, you want to make sure that you're getting on the platform when you have the time to put towards creating those resources. Because if you don't have something like a blog where you can send a lot of traffic back to, or you don't have downloadable resources or courses or masterclasses to actually send traffic to, it is difficult to build a presence on that platform. But you can get started, as you're saying, you know, create 25% to that one resource that you have created or the three blog posts that you have written and 75% repins. And as you're doing that, you can build out those resources to send more traffic to. Absolutely. And you guys, if you're just getting started, I will put a link in my show notes, not only to Emma and Hayden and all the things 95 media, but I will also put a link. You can download some of my personal Pinterest templates. I will just hand you the keys to the kingdom. The ones that work for me, um, that I was using myself before I hire these ladies to be my, my Pinterest goddesses. So, (laughs) you know, but occasionally I do still pin myself because it's just kind of like it's fun, you know, just creating those pens and adding extra stuff in there. Definitely. Yeah. It can be really fun, especially if you're doing it on like a Friday night with a glass of wine. You're like, let me do all of the things. Let me pin. Yeah. I do it a lot <laughs> of times in carpool, honestly. Like when I'm sitting in carpool for, you know, waiting on Hunter to finish baseball or Emily to get out of class or whatnot, like I will open my, you know, phone up and I'll be scrolling through and I'll go through my own show notes on the podcast and things. And now I'm like, oh, I can pin this. I can pin that. I can, you know, I start pinning, sitting in the car, waiting on the kids. I mean, that's part of the beauty of this product for your business. I love that. Especially if you have behind the scenes, that consistent pin content going out, you can pop in whenever you want and add extra content like that. And it just boosts the strategy that you're already in. Yeah. It just adds to it. Right. Yeah. Fuel to the fire. Cool. Anything else you guys want to, um, tell our audience about Pinterest? Cause I could, I mean, you guys have, you know, y'all know me, like I could talk Pinterest all day now, which I could probably stay on Pinterest all day now. Yes. No, I mean, I think it's just such a great tool. And if you do have the resources on your website to drive traffic back to, it absolutely should be a platform that you're on. You know, for a lot of our clients over time, it does become one of their biggest website drivers just because it is such a fast transition. It takes one click to get from Pinterest to your website versus a platform like Instagram, where you're looking at four to five clicks for them to get from your post to your actual resource. And so if you do have resources, Resources that you're trying to send people to, it is just such a great platform to really put some time and, you know, maybe investment into to really start building up in order to see more traffic to those pages that you're trying to get more traffic on. Yeah. And I especially want to, I want to leave with one of this thought for you. If, if you're, if you feel like you are a commodity business, you know, there's a million of you out there then one of the ways to differentiate yourself in the business world from everyone who's doing the same stuff is to try the platform that other people aren't obsessed with, which would be something like a Pinterest. You know, like if if there's a million real estate agents out there or a million business coaches or a million dog trainers, 
well then go on Pinterest and create some great content and become the only one on Pinterest or, or a very smaller pool to swim in. And you can boost your brand that way. Mm -hmm. Finding that white space as a brand is so crucial. And Pinterest does have a lot of white space, especially because you're just you're able to be found so much easier on Pinterest rather than something, even like TikTok today, you know, a couple of years ago, TikTok had so much white space. There was a lot of opportunity. It is a much more difficult platform to be on and to grow on. But Pinterest is one of those things where you can batch, you can show up and you can show up differently than other people in your space because they probably aren't going to put the effort in that you are on this platform. Absolutely. Ladies, thank you so much for joining me today. I, this is awesome. And I hope our, I know our audience got a lot from it and we are live streaming this to my community, the chick click group in which you guys need to go to the post in chick in the chick click Facebook group, because we have got a special link with a discount just for y'all that, um, these wonderful ladies are giving us what is a hundred dollars off of a strategy session. Yes. Yeah. So we offer strategy intensives, which is a one-on-one call with me to build out a full game plan for your marketing strategy can absolutely be dedicated just to Pinterest and we'll map out, you know, what is, what are your goals, your strategy, how should you execute? And then what, are, what are those data points that you're really looking for specifically for your brand? And you can save hundred dollars with the code is save 100. Yeah. And we'll put a link to it in the group, in the chick click and y'all, I mean, they do more than just Pinterest. Like they do all the socials. Right now, I'm just utilizing them for Pinterest because I took a concentrated effort in 2023 to really double down on it. And and, and I knew I had to bring in some help to do that. 